The final recipient, uh, and this time in the category that he characterized as everything else, um, which, is, which is known as technology, uh, the economy, and employment, uh, is Matthew Mullenweg. Matthew is, um, actually I, I've discovered from sp uh, speaking to people much younger than I am, is a superstar. Uh, actually, if we were having a conversation for just about technology on the Carnegie Mellon campus right now, this audi auditorium would be full of young students wanting to hear from him about, about his work. He's the inventor of a thing uh, called WordPress, uh, which, he, which he began working on at the age of 19, I guess. It's not quite seven, like Troy, but you know, <laughs> it ain't bad. Um, so at, at 19, uh, he helped to create a platform that now, I want you to think about, think about the number of websites in the world. Um, fuels, or, or is the platform for 25% of those. Uh, it's an extraordinary achievement, but what's more remarkable and what really stood out for the jury of the Heinz Awards and for the board of the Heinz Awards was that he had this commitment to a thing called open source. So to making this technology available and to democratizing its use and democratizing information, he wanted you and I and countless thousands like us to be able to create our own websites and communicate our own information without having to be uh, at, at the whim of, 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 a, of a company trying to drive it based on cost and profit. Uh, extraordinary commitment to openness that um, makes him very clearly the rightful recipient of the 21st annual Heinz Award in everything else, Matthew Mullenweg. <laughs> This metal is heavy. Um, and I guess I wanted to say thank you as well. Uh, hearing the stories of everyone here on the stage and also having lost a father this year, um, I can't think of a more amazing honor for your late husband, your father, um, to enable these stories to be heard by more and more. And I think technology as well is at its best when it enables those sorts of things. Uh, WordPress is a publishing platform but it started very modestly. It just started as some place for me and my friends to publish our photos and our writings. And, but we kind of lucked into something, I personally lucked into something, which was, as you mentioned, this idea of open source. Basically, open source says that the software uh, has a bill of rights attached to it. Normally, who's ever clicked through one of those long legal agreements <laughs> when you install something? Has anyone read one? <laughs> Attorneys? No, 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 no one. <laughs> yeah. We, we kind of bank on you not reading them, actually. Um, typically, what they do is you're signing away, besides your firstborn, many of your rights associated to using that software. And now think of how many different applications you use, how many services you signed up for, how many times you've clicked through that screen without ever, ever thinking about what you were maybe giving away. Uh, founding fathers talked about those who would trade freedom for convenience, freedom for security, deserve neither. Every day, we <coughs> trade away more and more of our freedom to be able to poke our friends on Facebook or have more followers on Twitter. Um, as a society, I worry that our means of distribution, as the fourth estate declines a little bit, I hear you still have two papers here in Pittsburgh, but as, mm, no? <laughs> Who <laughs> told me that? <laughs> uh, as you have one and a half papers here, and <laughs> this fourth estate has been in economic trouble because its business model, its control of the distribution, the fact that the way that jobs and comics and obituaries and news all bundled and showed up at your doorstop every day has been disintermediated by this technology, which can be a beautiful thing. But the business models, as often, have changed a little bit faster than society has kept up with it. Um, it's ever more important that we each have access to the printing presses, to the delivery boys, to the newspaper on everyone's doorstep that's enabled by these amazing devices in all of our pockets. Uh, 
Uh, who's ever used WordPress before here? Like as a, oh wow, it's a smart crew. <laughs> um, this idea that at a software level, because software is free and has an economics of abundance that can be available to everyone, you can use and publish on the exact same software that the New York Times does, the Wall Street Journal does, that People Magazine does. All of this can be there for you, and you're just a click away from everyone else in the world. Um, this can be very powerful. Uh, as we've seen in many of these stories, like uh, police doing terrible things didn't just start after the iPhone came out. It was happening for years and years, but now we have cameras in our pockets and we can document it. Um, there are certain photos which have changed, you know, arguably the course of history, even though Facebook doesn't want you to see them anymore. Um, but now each of us can have that moment, have that ability to publish and get out there. Um, and I think, like I said, it's more and more important that these, the space which we publish in is something that truly belongs to us and that we truly own. Uh, not something that is really just at the whims of a commercial entity. Uh, like I said, I'm everything else, so I got the economy and employment in there too. Open source is often seen, people ask, like, oh, you give all the software away, how do you make money? How do you create something? Uh, when I started the company Automatic, which now employs over 500 people in 52 <coughs> countries, we would look to say, how could we apply this idea of technology and open source and what that enables? to skate to where the puck is going, to create a different kind of company that could perhaps, perhaps create opportunities beyond what we've seen before. So instead of uh, you know, the first four people, uh, we had already been working together as volunteers on this WordPress thing. Uh, one was in Cork in Ireland, one was in Vermont, one was in Texas, and I had moved to San Francisco at that time. Every investor, everyone said, you need to get an office, move everyone to San Francisco. You won't be able to create a great product unless you're all together. But we had already been working together in creating products. So we said, well, why don't we use this thing called the internet and do what we've been doing before and try to do something different? Um, like I said, over 500 people now, um, nine figures of revenue growing quickly, and we'll hire probably about another 150 in the next few months. Um, in every country, when you think of the amazing potential of both technology and design, which has benefited so much of us. The iPhone in your pocket is the same iPhone that a billionaire like Warren Buffett has. It's the same device with the same access to the software. Technology can be a force for uh, creating a quality of opportunity like nothing we've ever seen. But we have to have this Bill of Rights. When you, know, you talked about the Nest, when uh, we have things turning our thermostats on and off, when we have uh, software driving cars around our city, perhaps. The algorithms and the data and the code that runs this, I think belongs to us as a public as much, if not more so, than any one company. And so whatever the forces are, and I believe that there will be economic and social forces as well as government that, for, that brings us to this point, we need to be able to open the hood and see how it works if we're going to truly maintain our free society as we become more and more digital. Thank you. So you know what's really great is um, awarding a prize to Matthew Mullenweg, inventor of WordPress, and then discovering that your website isn't on WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, I think a lot of us have made that mistake and, and, and are moving to change it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it, but it's extraordinary, and I, you know, I'm curious when, when you, um, you know, you're, you're very clear on why uh, the open source movement is um, a, a blow for equity and for creating a more equitable society. Uh, and I love the invocation of the iPhone example as part of that, you know, that, that that's part of what's helping us tell truth in a way that we haven't been able to before because nobody was there to film it. Uh, and we're able to make that available and publish it worldwide. Um, on the other hand, 
we see a lot of craziness being published worldwide. And in a world where literally everyone is their own publisher, where precisely when everybody laughed about the two newspapers, um, they're victims of precisely the phenomenon that, that you're describing. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how should we properly think of the role of this new technology um, in the context of, of a desire for a more equitable society? It's a tough question mm -hmm. because you do have something where, um, you know, tweets aren't votes. Uh, the mass of, so the masses that social media can drive to be very excited about an issue might be gone weeks or months later when, you know, more donations are needed to keep the legal fund going or things like that. So we can be very uh, ADHD in our approach or uh, uh, always on to the new shiny thing. I think that you know, when you, we talk about maybe traditional news organizations starting to falter, I think it's because they didn't em uh, embrace technology. And so how we can think about it is by applying what technology has shown to be successful, radical transparency, openness, people working together all over the world, and apply this to every part of our lives. Um, there's no reason that every piece of software that our tax dollars fund shouldn't belong to all of us and that code shouldn't be open for anyone else to see. The city of San Francisco, which is a city of just like 800,000, 900,000 people, spends $50 million per year in their IT budget. Um, basically, all of WordPress was built for 1 50th of that. <laughs> so when you think of the impact, and by the way, San Francisco is doing it. How many hundreds of other cities around the country are also duplicating the same things? We're starting to see bits and pieces open sourcing of an app for reporting potholes. This can happen a little bit, but we need to go, I think, much, much further, all the way to the very heart of our democracy, which is voting. Our voting machines are not open source. Many of them don't have paper trails. In a world post-Snowden, in a world where foreign interests like Russia are impacting many of our online discussions uh, with fake accounts, with actually hacking things and releasing things, you know, Making things more closed and secret is not the solution. We have to radically open up. And I think that while bad things will happen, you know, you might, you know, Trump has a Twitter too. Um, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tweets not votes, or votes not tweets, right? Um, over time, I believe that, well, I'm an optimist at my heart, and I believe in the fundamental good of humanity and that we have getting more people speaking, getting more people publishing, getting more people out there. Uh, yes, there will be some bad things, but overall, it is a, uh, an antidote to many of the ills of society. Great. Or at least a step along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.